So we're doing this series um, on the other side of no. And we've dealt with rejection. And last week we dealt with, Anna dealt with failure, right? And tonight we're gonna deal, we're gonna start, we're not gonna get all the way through, but tonight we're gonna start dealing with loss. I want you to think back of the last major loss in your life. It, it could have been a parent. It could have been a friend. It could have been a coworker. It could have been, um, it could have been a husband. It could have been a wife. When we were doing this, um, when we were doing this uh, group for tonight on Tuesday morning, talking about this, you know, when we were starting to talk about some of our own losses in our own lives as a group, it pretty much felt like we were talking about something that happened a day ago, amen? And you, do you know that feeling when you talk about losing your mom or your dad or your sister or your brother or your best friend or your wife or your husband or, you know, maybe the hardest thing in the room or one of them, you know, one of your children, isn't it true that it feels like it was yesterday or like right now? And those emotions come back to you and what's unresolved comes back to you. And maybe it wasn't the loss by death. Maybe it was the loss of innocence. Maybe you were 11 and you got molested by your uncle. And what you lost that day or that night was your innocence. And what you lost that night was ever feeling clean Amen, again. Or what you lost that night was trust. Or maybe you saw your, your dad beat your mom, or maybe you saw your mom beat your dad, or, or maybe you got beat, or maybe your brother did or your sister did. And you remember what it felt like when you said to yourself inside, because you wouldn't have said it out loud, I'm, I'm never gonna feel safe again. I mean, I remember like it was an hour ago being told that my dad was dead. And I can sit here and tell you that before I heard that news in my life, I thought that the world was a completely and totally um, safe place. And after I was told that news, it has taken me a long time to feel safe again, amen? Part of what codependency is all about is the fear of something, the fear of life getting out of control, the fear of love getting out of control, the fear of relationships, people, stuff getting out of control because it's driven by fear, which is driven by loss. Unresolved loss is a guaranteed recipe for relapse, amen? Because you're going along and you were in this marriage and you thought everything was okay and your wife came home and it was Tuesday afternoon and you were tired and you got home after work and it was 5.15, and she gave that look where like she was there, right? But she wasn't really there. And she started to fidget around with what she was doing. And then finally she, she couldn't take it. She looked at you and she said, you know, I gotta tell you something. She said, you know, I'm, um, I'm leaving you. I'm gonna leave you. And I'm in love with somebody else and you were standing on terra firma 20 seconds before, amen? You were on the solid ground. And all of a sudden she said that, and the ground went away from underneath of you, amen? Do you know that feeling? And your gut goes from here to your knees. And you feel like you're gonna throw up, except you can't, amen? And 
you go through that and you try to put it on a shelf someplace and you put it up in this corner of your emotional life and you put it up in this closet and you hope to God you don't see it again. And then, you know, five years later, three years later, you meet somebody and you're gonna you want to marry him or you love him or you think you do and you're going along and everything's all right until that one day for some reason something happens with them and they do something they're not where they say where you thought they were going to be amen and the next thing you know boosh the bottom is out again that's because see really loss walks on with us if we don't walk through it. Amen? It has tremendous effect on our relationships. People that grow up with, that are adult children of alcoholics or adult children of addicts, there is a script that is as clear as a bell. And I can show you the hit parade of how it feels and the things you'll react to. And I can show you the insecurity that you're living with in your life every day with people that are nowhere close to being addicts or alcoholics. I can show you what it's like. You're going to go, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me. Because that's a loss of trust, too. Every one of us in this room, if we have any life on us, on us at all, we know what I'm talking about. Amen? Grief doesn't change you. It reveals you. <laughs> when I go through that next loss it starts to speak to me about what it is that's still there inside of me, amen? And it's like dominoes. That's a quote from John Green, this book, The Fault in Our Stars. And he goes on to tell another story in this book. And he goes, he goes you know, this one day, he says, I, I had to go to an emergency room. And I thought that I had all these chest pains and I thought I was having a heart attack. And when I got to the emergency room, the nurse in the ER says to me, okay, now look, on a scale of one to 10, she held up 10 fingers. On a scale of one to 10, what would you say your pain level was? And he says, in the book, he goes, well, you know, it was a 10. But I didn't want to tell her it was a 10. So I lied to her and I told her it was a nine. And then here's where you pick up the story. He says, but that wasn't quite right. I called it a nine because... I was saving my 10. And here it was, the great and terrible 10, slamming me again and again as I lay still and alone in my bed, staring at the ceiling. The waves tossing me against the rocks, then pulling me back out to sea so they could launch me again into the jagged face of the cliff, leaving me floating face up on the water, undrowned. Have you ever had grief or a loss in your life so large, so overwhelming, so powerful, so loud that you wish that God would just take you? Do you know anything about that? You see, when God doesn't, you hope to God that cocaine does, or you hope to God that alcohol does, or sex does, or something does, something will take that away from you. We, when it's all said and done, we grieve finally the loss, maybe the biggest loss of all. Our own perception that we're the bosses of our lives, amen? that we're in charge of our own lives. That's the one fundamental difference of hanging around with Jesus and every other spiritual system. In every other spiritual system, you're still your own boss and you just gotta do right. Jesus goes, you wanna hang with me? You gotta give up your whole life. You cannot be in any way, shape, or form in control. And we got lots of churches that are very addicted to teaching self-control, amen? But that is not the gospel, and that is not what Jesus teaches, and that is not the word. 
The other side of grieving the loss of control is downright avoidance, amen? How many of us, if we were honest tonight, would say that we know a lot about avoiding? You know, the beauty of being a hero of coming to a place like this is you have gotten to a place where there is at least the opportunity for people to be with you tonight that will not be afraid to let you stop avoiding the truth. Amen? There's so much scripture where God speaks to loss. You know, one of them is the most famous one. Even when the way goes through Death Valley, I am not afraid when you walk by my side. Your trusty shepherd's crook makes me feel secure. That's Psalm 23. You know, when you can read that thing 10,000 times and you're going to see something different. One day, um, I was doing a wedding probably a year and a half ago. And so, you know, I said to the couple, I'm going to send you some scriptures um, that you can look at. You might want to pick one of those for your wedding. You could pick another one. She the bride picks Psalm 23. <laughs> I was so taken by it, I, I call her up. I go, did you mean Psalm 32? She goes, no, I meant Psalm 23. She goes, is there any better way to start off a marriage than going, I'm having God walk me through the stuff of life? I said, well, thank you very much, ma'am. You have just taught me a ton a ton. You never walk alone in the valley that you're in in life. You never really walk through loss alone. You think you do. You imagine that you are. You think that you're having to go through it by yourself. You think that nobody else understands. You, you know, sometimes we want to honor that. We want to honor our peculiarity. We want to honor the fact that, you know what? Nobody else knows in the world today what it's like to spend $200 a week on pornography online. No one would know how compelling that is. It's me, just sick, messed up me. No one could know what it's like to have to have a drink at six in the morning and to only think about it all day long. No one else could know that. No one. Only me. And see, isolation is a killer. That, that particularity of us that we believe about ourselves, look at it, it's a killer. You never walk alone in the valley of the shadow of death. Either it is true that you have, you have come to a place where you've seen that God is sitting right beside you. Or you've come to a place where you're not aware that the enemy is holding you right there. One is, one is true. The truth about Jesus is, is his desire is to come into that valley and to sit with you long enough for you to be ready to walk with him. But then to walk you out, amen? The enemy's job is not only to keep you there, but to make sure that you die there. Some of you guys tonight are willing to die for your losses that you've been holding on to for five, 10, 15, 20 years. I don't know what they are, but I do know something about the valley. And I do know something about the way the enemy plays the game. And I do know how dangerous it is. Here, here's the question. We're not getting all the way through this conversation about loss tonight, but here's the question tonight. There's no disputing the loss in this room, right? If we, if we started writing on that screen, the losses that have been amassed in this room, we wouldn't even be done. We wouldn't even be done once it was full. Here's the question. Do you believe that Jesus, who walked into the room of a four-day-old dead man, 
His name was Lazarus. And maybe you're here tonight and you're like, well, I I feel like I've been dead for 40 years. I feel like I've been dead for 15. He doesn't know anything about 15. What would he do with 15? Jesus would walk into your 15 years of loss and he would walk into your 15 years of death exactly the same way that he walked in to four days of Lazarus' death. Amen. No fear. No worry. One concern only. You know what it is? You. Me. There is no death, no loss, no pain in this world today, in my life or in your life, that can hold down this Jesus of ours. None. Do you believe that he has the authority to defeat your death? And do you believe that Jesus is the only one who can walk into your valley, walk into your death house, walk into your past, walk into your history, walk into your stuff, walk into the stuff you're ashamed of, walk into what happened to you, walk into what didn't happen to you, walk into the hole inside of you because of who left, because of who stayed, because of who hit you, because of who yelled at you, because of who did whatever. Do you believe that he's the only one in the room tonight that can walk into all of that or any of that and grab a hold of you and pull you out? Do you believe that? That is the truth of the gospel. The truth of the gospel is, is that we accept the fact that we are walking around without Jesus as dead people and that we are walking around with Jesus fully, fully alive. And tonight, you know, we're gonna share this meal. And I'm gonna tell you this meal, here's the beauty of this meal. It's for people that are feeling dead tonight It's for people that are fully alive in Jesus. It's for people that have been carrying around your junk like it's an anchor for 15 years. It's for people that have come here tonight that know they're set free. And we're gonna share a meal tonight that has the ability and the strength and the power and the authority from this raised Jesus to set us all free, to set us all free and to breathe life into all of us. And what do you what do you got to do to be worthy of it? You just got to be here. Amen. You just got to be here.